There are times in every one of our lives when we are faced with circumstances and situations that are so far beyond us and it seems like that the trouble will never end. And when those times and circumstances and situations occur, what do we do? How do we handle them? What source do we turn to? I'm Tyrone Bowman. This is Tyrone Bowman Tonight. The topic of discussion for this evening is simple. The power of a vow. The power of a vow. Many individuals are turning to the wrong places, wrong people, and wrong vices in order to be able to excel and to thrive in this world. Ladies and gentlemen, I've said this over and over again. I want to say it one more time tonight. I am an inspirational, motivational teacher. I am not a motivational speaker. There's a huge difference because I deal with precepts, concepts, ideologies, real life circumstances and situations in an attempt to be able to educate, inform, inspire, and motivate all of us, including myself, to do things the right way, the decent way, and the honest way. You can be, do, and have anything good and wonderful in this life. You can live a life filled with health, happiness, success, prosperity, love, joy, and money, and guess what? Yes, you can have eternal life as well. But don't make the wrong decision in turning to the wrong source or the wrong organization with the wrong people thinking that material things will get you what you want in this world. If that were the case, then there would be a lot of wonderfully happy people in this world. I know a lot of people who seem to have it all. Money, fame, power, education, notoriety, etc. But yet on the inside, they're lonely. They're full of disparity, worry, fear, distrust, agony. Why? Because they are lacking something in his or her life. On this evening, I want to talk about a man by the name of Jacob. And perhaps we can all learn what happened to Jacob in the day of trouble when he was on the run from his brother Esau. Yes, a terrible thing happened in Jacob's life. First of all, his name means, or meant, I should say, trickster, manipulator, deceiver. And he was on the run because he tricked his father with the help of his mother into believing that he was actually his brother Esau. And as a result of that, the ven venison or the beautiful meal that he ate, he actually thought that it was the pure deer that his brother Esau was famously known for hunting and preparing for his father. And as a result of that, he gave his final blessing upon the one that he thought was Esau. In actuality, it was Jacob. And Jacob was on the run from his brother because he knew his brother was angry. And he knew that his brother would eventually catch up with him and perhaps murder him. Why? For deceiving and manipulating. Whether you believe in the, the Bible or not, whether you believe in Almighty Jehovah God or not, that's not the issue here. But I am going to use, as I've said before, I use the Bible and other means as illustrations. See, I know who I believe in. I know who I've pledged my loyalty to. I hope that you make the right decision during your lifetime as well. There's a story in the book of Genesis, the 28th chapter. And I'm going to read some things. First of all, what is a vow? Let's define what a vow is. A vow is a solemn promise, meaning it's an oath, a pledge, a bond, a covenant, a commitment, a vow, profession, sworn statement, it's an affirmation, attestation, assurance, word, it's a word of honor. A guarantee. Wow. A vermin. A vow. 
It's a solemn promise. When you solemnly promise or vow to do a specified thing. Do you know why a lot of individuals in life, and I've heard people say this, I, I don't make promises. I don't make promises. You know why they don't make promises? Because they don't want to commit themselves to anything, anyone, or anybody. They don't make promises because they are afraid that they're going to have to live up to the covenant that they've made. Yes, a promise is a vow. A vow is a covenant. What did Jacob do when he was in trouble? Let's talk about, I'm going to talk about Jacob's vow for a few moments. And it's important to know, as recorded in the book of Genesis, the 28th chapter, the 20th verse through the 22nd verse. And in a moment, I will begin to quote. It's important that we understand these things. Then I'm going to say something that may shock some of you. But sometimes we need to be shocked into reality because the world will not play with you. Life will not play with you. Life circumstances and situations will not play with you. Either individuals are going to rise up to the occasion and become men and women, handle their responsibilities and their obligations, or they're going to defer them to somebody else. According to the King James Version, the authorized King James Version of Scripture, the 28th chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning with the 20th verse, and I quote, And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat, and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. According to this translation here, and I like it very much. So Jacob then made a vow, saying, If God will continue with me and will protect me, and give me bread to eat and garments to wear, and I return in peace to the house of my father, then Jehovah will certainly have proved to be my God. So Jacob made a vow with who? With Almighty Yahweh, Almighty Jehovah, Adonai, Elohim. How do you know that, Tyrone? Well, when you look at the word Lord, there's a capital L there, meaning that it's indicative. It's ascribed to a sovereign, a deity. Jacob out of desperation, Jacob out of heartache, Jacob, out of fear, made this vow to Jehovah God. And it was a simple vow, yet it was an extremely powerful vow. Jacob vowed a vow. Jacob made a covenant. Jacob made a promise. Jacob swore. Jacob, Jacob entered into a verbal, contractual agreement with Almighty God. What God are you serving? What God have you pledged your life to? What God have you sworn allegiance to? And to whom did you make a vow to? Be very, very careful. Do not play with things that you don't understand. And don't mess with supernatural and spiritual forces and powers that you know nothing about. I'll pause on that one and look right in the camera at you. Be careful what you say and what you do. When Jacob made that vow, Almighty God, Jehovah, heard him. He listened to him. He accepted what he said. How do you know? Later on, the story begins to unfold in an even greater fashion, as recorded in the 35th chapter of the book of Genesis. Jacob is commanded to do something. And God said to Jacob, beginning with the first verse, and I quote, And God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. And then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments or your clothes. 
and let us arise and go up to Bethel. And I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Then it says, the sixth verse, So Jacob came to Luz, which is in the land of Canaan, that is in, that is Bethel, he and all the people that were with him. And he built there an altar and called the place of Bethel, meaning the house of God, because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. The ninth verse says, and I quote, And God appeared unto Jacob again, when he came out of pa Aram and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. Don't allow people to call you by names and titles that are not divinely and righteous and godly. Be careful of the name that you take upon yourself during your lifetime. Why? Because that's what you have to become Israel means he is a prince with Jehovah Almighty Yahweh, Elohim. And he, and he said this to him. Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called anymore Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I, and God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee and kings shall come out of thee. So he is with him. And now he's letting him know that I am going to, to, uh, to bless your life. And I'm going to fulfill my promise through you, as I told Abraham. Wow, this is getting deep and heavy. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee, I will give it. And to thy seed after thee, I will give the land. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone. And he poured out a drink offering thereon, and he poured oil thereon. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spake with him, Bethel, or the house of God. What do you have in your heart? What do you have in your home? Where do you worship at? It is vitally important. These are things, I'm talking about the power of a vow. Jacob said, in my distress, in my day of trouble, I cried out unto Jehovah God. And I made a vow unto him, and he heard me. He reminded his wives, and he said, I must build an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went, and he gave the tenth of all that he had unto Almighty God. And if you look at it further, there are so many lessons in this to be learned. I say it again, you can be what you want to be, you can do what you want to do, and you can have what you want to have. That's what the late Reverend Ike used to always say to men and women. And he meant it when he said it. You can rise up. You can come out of your dilemma. You can come out of the circumstances. You can come out of the heartache and the pain, the lack, the want, the disparity. Don't go by what you see. Don't go by what you hear. Don't go by what individuals have said to you. Go by what your heart is telling you to do. But make sure any decision that you make, it is the right and decent decision for your life. like to read the, those same verses from here for a minute. In the 35th chapter, that is, of the book of Genesis, and then I'm going to wrap this up for tonight. After that, God said to Jacob, rise, 
Go up to Bethel and dwell there and make an altar there to the true God who appeared to you when you were running away from Esau, your brother. He made it clear to him. He reminded him, you came to me. I didn't come to you. You came to me in the day of trouble. You came to me in the day of calamity. You called upon me. I heard you. Now I require of you. Remember your vow that you made to me. Go back to the place of origin. Go back to the place of beginnings. Why? Because I will talk to you when you build an altar or a sacred place of worship. In the book of Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter, verses four through six, take note. The third chapter, verses four through six. Let me, I'm sorry. The book of Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter, verses four through six. My bad, y'all. When thou vowest a vow unto God, I quote, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore, God should be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands. Almighty God does not play. If you say something, if you tell him you're going to do something, if you make a solemn oath, a vow, a promise, if you enter into a covenant with him. Don't you know that when individuals enter into what they call secret organizations or societies, they take oaths, they take vows, they enter into covenants, and you swear and pledge allegiance to them. Because if you violate that, then you must pay the ultimate price. Jacob was reminded by Jehovah God, the book of Ecclesiastes, and this is a word of caution, before you make a vow, consider what you are about to vow before you vow it. And consider your actions, consider your ways, consider your motive, consider the purpose for which you are making a covenant with Almighty God for and when you come to Jehovah God, remember, it is in that mighty, powerful name of Jesus that you should come to him. Ladies and gentlemen, the power of a vow can open many doors and present opportunities on every level in all walks of life. The power of a vow can cause you to be, to do, and to have. And I want to talk to the religious community for a moment especially the Christian one, listen to me. For those of you that are pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles, prophets, whatever your title may be, and you have congregations and ministries, and it doesn't seem like things are not working out for you, your back seems to be is up against the wall and the finances, no, the money, the money, the moolah, the cheddar is not coming in the way that you want it to. Don't manipulate and use people and take advantage of them and pimp them. You need to practice what you preach, practice what you teach. The power of a vow. That's what you need to make in your life and stand upon it. So, in my closing words for tonight, remember this. The power of a vow will open many doors and present many opportunities for you. But be prepared to live up to what you have promised, what you have covenanted to, what you have sworn to. Never surrender, never quit.